Welcome back to Just Wing It's Airwolf Tours. Today we are in Egypt. Sadly there is missing scenery I have not had a chance to fix yet, so please bear with me. Today there will be some historic commentary built into the scenery, so sit back and enjoy. Up ahead is a classic Egyptian marketplace. Let's have a closer look. The Great Sphinx of Giza, commonly referred to as the Sphinx of Giza or just the Sphinx, is a limestone statue of the reclining Sphinx, a mythical creature with the body of a lion and the head of a human. Facing directly from west to east, it stands on the Giza Plateau on the west bank of the Nile in Giza, Egypt. The face of the Sphinx is generally believed to represent the pharaoh Khafre. Cut from the bedrock. The original shape of the Sphinx has been restored with layers of blocks. It measures 73 meters, 240 feet, long from paw to tail. 20.21 meters, 66.31 feet, high from the base to the top of the head and 19 meters, 62 feet, wide at its rear haunches. It is the oldest known monumental sculpture in Egypt and is commonly believed to have been built by ancient Egyptians of the Old Kingdom during the reign of the pharaoh Khafre. Construction The Sphinx is a monolith carved into the bedrock of the plateau, which also served as the quarry for the pyramids and other monuments in the area. The nummulitic limestone of the area consists of layers which offer differing resistance to erosion, leading to the uneven degradation apparent in the Sphinx's body. The lowest part of the body, including the legs, is solid rock. The body of the lion up to its neck is fashioned from softer layers that have suffered considerable disintegration. The layer in which the head was sculpted is much harder. Origin and Identity the Great Sphinx is one of the world's largest and oldest statues, but bossy sea facts about it are still subject to debate, such as when it was built, by whom and for what purpose. Names It is impossible to identify what name the creators called their statue, as the Great Sphinx does not appear in any known inscription of the Old Kingdom and there are no inscriptions anywhere describing its construction or its original purpose. In the New Kingdom, the Sphinx was revered as the solar deity Hor Emmaket, in English, Horus of the Horizon, and the pharaoh Thutmose IV, 1401 to 1391 or 1397-1388 BC. Specifically referred to it as such in his dream stele. The commonly used name Sphinx was given to it in classical antiquity, about 2000 years after the commonly accepted date of its construction by reference to a Greek mythological beast with a lion's body, a woman's head and the wings of a eagle. Although, like most Egyptian Sphinxes, the Great Sphinx has a man's head and no wings. The English word Sphinx comes from an ancient Greek word transliterated to Sphinx, after the Greek Sphinx who strangled anyone who failed to answer her riddle. Builder and Time Frame 
Though there have been conflicting evidence and viewpoints over the years, the view held by modern Egyptology at large remains that the Great Sphinx was built in approximately 2500 BC for the Pharaoh Khafre, the builder of the Second Pyramid of Giza. The Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as the Pyramid of Khufu or the Pyramid of Cheops, is the oldest and largest of the three pyramids in the Giza pyramid complex bordering present-day El Giza, Egypt. It is the oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and the only one to remain largely intact. Based on a mark in an interior chamber naming the work gang and a reference to the 4th dynasty Egyptian pharaoh Khufu, some Egyptologists believe that the pyramid was thus built as a tomb over a 10 to 20 year period concluding around 2560 BC, initially at 146.5 meters, 481 feet. The Great Pyramid was the tallest man-made structure in the world for more than 3,800 years until Lincoln Cathedral was finished in 1311 AD. Originally, the Great Pyramid was covered by limestone casing stones that formed a smooth outer surface. What is seen today is the underlying core structure. Some of the casing stones that once covered the structure can still be seen around the base. There have been varying scientific and alternative theories about the Great Pyramid's construction techniques. Most accepted construction hypotheses are based on the idea that it was built by moving huge stones from a quarry and dragging and lifting them into place. There are three known chambers inside the Great Pyramid. The lowest chamber is cut into the bedrock upon which the pyramid was built and was unfinished. The so-called Queen's Chamber and King's Chamber are higher up within the pyramid structure. Th. The main part of the Giza complex is a set of buildings that included two mortuary temples in honor of Khufu, one close to the pyramid and one near the Nile, three smaller pyramids for Khufu's wives, an even smaller satellite pyramid, a raised causeway connecting the two temples, and small mastaba tombs surrounding the pyramid for nobles. History and Description Egyptologists believe the pyramid was built as a tomb for the 4th dynasty Egyptian pharaoh Khufu, often Hellenized as Cheops, and was constructed over a 20-year period. Khufu's vizier, Hemianu, also called Hamon, is believed by some to be the architect of the Great Pyramid. It is thought that, at construction, the Great Pyramid was originally 280 Egyptian royal cubits tall, 146.5 meters, 480.6 feet, but with erosion and absence of its pyramidion, its present height is 138.8 meters, 455.4 feet. Each base side was 440 cubits, 230.4 meters, 755.9 feet, long. The mass of the pyramid is estimated at 5.9 million tons. The volume, including an internal hillock, is roughly 2,500,000 cubic meters, 88 million cubic feet. Based on these estimates, building the pyramid in 20 years would involve installing approximately 800 tons of stone every day. Additionally, since it consists of an estimated 2.3 million blocks, completing the building in 20 years would involve moving an average of more than 12 of the blocks into place each hour, day and night. 
The first precision measurements of the pyramid were made by Egyptologist Sir Flanders Petrie in 1882 and published as the Pyramids and Temples of Giza. Almost all reports are based on his measurements. Many of the casing stones and inner chamber blocks of the Great Pyramid fit together with extremely high precision. Based on measurements taken on the northeastern casing stones, the mean opening of the joints is only 0.5 mm wide materials. The Great Pyramid consists of an estimated 2.3 million blocks which most believe to have been transported from nearby quarries. The Tura limestone used for the casing was quarried across the river. The largest granite stones in the pyramid, found in the King's Chamber, weigh 25 to 80 tons and were transported from Aswan, more than 800 kilometers, 500 miles, away. Traditionally, clarification needed, ancient Egyptians cut stone blocks by hammering into them wooden wedges, which were then soaked with water. As the water was absorbed, the wedges expanded, causing the rock to crack. Once they were cut, they were carried by boat either up or down the Nile River to the pyramid. It is estimated that 5.5 million tons of limestone, 8,000 tons of granite, imported from Aswan, and 500,000 tons of mortar were used in the construction of the Great Pyramid. Interior The original entrance to the Great Pyramid is on the north, 17 meters, 56 feet, vertically above ground level and 7.29 meters, 23.9 feet, east of the center line of the pyramid. From this original entrance, there is a descending passage 0.96 meters, 3.1 feet, high and 1.04 meters, 3.4 feet, wide, which goes down at an angle of 26 degrees 31 minutes 23 seconds through the masonry of the pyramid and then into the bedrock beneath it. After 105.23 meters, 345.2 feet, the passage becomes level and continues for an additional 8.84 meters, 29.0 feet, to the lower chamber, which appears not to have been finished. There is a continuation of the horizontal passage in the south wall of the lower chamber, there is also a pit dug in the floor of the chamber. Some Egyptologists suggest that this lower chamber was intended to be the original burial chamber, but Pharaoh Khufu later changed his mind and wanted it to be higher up in the pyramid. 28.2 meters, 93 feet, from the entrance is a square hole in the roof of the descending passage. Originally concealed with a slab of stone, this is the beginning of the ascending passage. The ascending passage is 39.3 meters, 129 feet, long, as wide and high as the descending passage and slopes up at almost precisely the same angle to reach the Grand Gallery. The lower end of the ascending passage is closed by three huge blocks of granite, each about 1.5 meters, 4.9 feet, long. One must use the robber's tunnel, see below, to access the ascending passage. At the start of the Grand Gallery on the right-hand side there is a hole cut in the wall. This is the start of a vertical shaft which follows an irregular path through the masonry of the pyramid to join the descending passage. Also, at the start of the Grand Gallery there is the horizontal passage leading to the Queen's Chamber. The passage is 1.1 meters, 3 feet 8 inches, high for most of its length, but near the chamber there is a step in the floor, after which the passage is 1.73 meters, 5.7 feet, high. Due to time constraints today, I will not be doing the other two pyramids. The Pyramid of Khafra or of Hebron is the second tallest and second largest of the ancient Egyptian pyramids. Let's just ignore that for now.
head of classic Egyptian poems. Give me two bits. Mark one exceeded. for reverse thrust. Re-engaging motors. Up ahead on that hillside, I believe it is a mosque, but I don't know anything about it. If anyone does know, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you. for today folks thank you for watching and see you next time please don't forget to like subscribe share and turn on notifications